Good morning. Welcome back to this week's Word. I'm Pastor Jody, First Baptist Church. So we're in the season of gift giving, and I pray today that you have already received the greatest gift that has ever been given. It is the gift of God's love through His Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whosoever believeth on Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. This is the greatest gift of love, and I pray that you have received it. If not, I pray that you're opening opening that gift even as we speak. And so over the past several weeks, we've learned that at best, at best, that we as individuals in this life, at best we are sinners, and we desperately need the forgiveness of God. Romans chapter 5 verse 8 says this, But God demonstrates his own love toward us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You hear the gift that was given for you so long ago? Christ died for our individual sins that we might have life. And not just life, but the abundance of life that's talked about in John chapter 10, verse 10, the latter half of that. In 1 John chapter 4, we find in God's word in verses 9 through 10 that the Lord says this, In this the love of God was manifested toward us that God has sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. And this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he had, but He loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. So here we're told that God has given us his everlasting love. And what a blessing that is. And God has given us so many blessings. And I, I love the scriptures that talk about his promises, because all of his promises are yes and amen. So when the Lord says that he come to give us life, what a gift of love that was. And, and I pray that you've already received that. So we're going to be in Romans chapter 8 this week. And we're going to start in verse 31. As we hear this familiar verse, What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? If God is for us, who can be against us? What does that mean, if God is for us? Have you ever thought about that? If God is for us, then who can be against us? Psalms chapter 23, verse 4 says this, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Psalms chapter 56 verse 9 says this, When I cry out to you, then my enemies will turn back. This I know because God is for me. What does it mean if God is for us? It means that he's with us every step of the way. Even though that we have sinned, in our lives. The Holy Spirit is working in us. We talked about the, the gift, that wonderful gift of the Holy Spirit last week. Talk about gift giving. We're given the Holy Spirit. And now we're talking about the gift of love. The reason that we have the gift of the Holy Spirit and the power of the Holy Spirit living in our, in our lives is because God loves us. He cares for us. And so God is for us. God is with us every step of the way. Even though we sometimes fall into sin, we have the gift of the Holy Spirit bring us back into a right relationship with the Father. This gift of love is everlasting. It's an everlasting love. God's love will not fail. He can't fail. It's not in him to fail. His love will never fail. We might fail, but his love for us will never fail. It continues to draw us. And yes, it even sometimes draws us back from our sins into a right relationship with Him. So receive that gift today. Be reacquainted with that gift today. Sometimes we open the gift and we put that gift on the shelf and we forget about it for a while. We forget about it for a season, especially when things seem to be going good. And then when things start going bad, at first, we're not remembering that we still have that awesome gift of love. But when we're flat on our backs and we have nowhere else to turn, we look up to the Father and we remember that that gift that was given so long ago is still ours today. And it's God's everlasting love. Look at verse 32 in Romans chapter 8. He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. 
how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? God gave us his one and only son. Do you think for a moment that he's going to hold anything else back from us? If he was willing to give us his one and only son, certainly God will give us his blessings as well. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 2 through 4 says this, Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Notice that. He's given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Through the knowledge of him who called us up by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So that last line there, that we, we realize that lust is in this world. But the promises of God, <clears throat> the promise of God is that he has given us every blessing. He has given us every ability to pull away from these sins and be brought back into the presence of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And it's because of his great love for us. Let's go on down and look at verses 33 through 34. <clears throat> who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercessions for us. We talked about this, I think it was last week, that at the right hand of the Father sits our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And he's not just sitting there watching the world go by, waiting for the time when the Father says, okay, go get my church. He's there at the right hand of the Father, and he's making intercessions for you and I. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25 tells us that he's at the right hand of the Father, interceding on our behalf. Because the enemy, Satan, comes to the Father and accuses us, especially when we fall into sin. He accuses us, and the Lord is there interceding on our behalf, saying, Father, I, I paid for that sin, and I paid for it with my own blood. And I, and I love that, <clears throat> that Christ is at the right hand of the Father, interceding for us, especially when the enemy comes. And accuses us and tries to condemn us. The Lord Jesus is there to remind Satan that our sin has been paid for by his very own blood. How can you not receive this gift of love today? How can you not praise the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit today? I pray that you're rejoicing because of these wonderful blessings that the Lord our God has bestowed upon each and every one of us. Look at verse 35 through 36. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulations or distresses or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. You know what this tells me? It tells me that God's people has always faced persecution and hardships. But God has never failed us once. He's never left us once, nor has his love failed for us. God is with us every step of the way. And yes, there will be hardships. There will be tribulations. We will go through some stuff in this life. As a man who's gone through some stuff himself, you know, my family has experienced a lot of tribulation. My family has experienced a lot of hurt, a lot of pain, a lot of sorrow. And I'm here to tell you, that the Lord my God has never failed me, has never failed my family, has never failed my church family. He's there when we need him. He's always there. His word proclaims in Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 6, that he will never leave us nor forsake us. So when things start to go wonky, when things go sideways, God doesn't leave us. He's right there to carry us through. And he can be trusted. We can lean upon him. Even when we fall into sin and we stray away from the rest of the flock, God is able to find us and he's able to carry us back 
until it's safe for us to get our feet back on the ground. He is the good shepherd. Verse 37 through 39 says this, Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. There's victory. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. We are more than conquerors because of God's great and everlasting love. And because of that everlasting love, nothing could ever separate us from him. Read the story of Jonah when he's swallowed by the giant fish and he goes down into the depths of the sea and in the belly of that fish, he's in there, he's, he's got seaweed wrapped around his, his head. He's in outer darkness with no light whatsoever. Could you imagine? Could you imagine being in that position? And from that place, from the belly of Sheol, he says, he felt the love of God. He remembered God's everlasting love. And he began to call upon the name of God. And I believe that he entered into a time of repentance. And the next thing you know, that well or that, that great fish, I'm sorry, it doesn't say well, but that great fish spews him out of its mouth right there on dry land. And he begins his journey back into a right relationship with the Father. So even when we get to these dark places in our lives sometimes, God meets us there. And he can minister to us from that point. But we have to remember God's everlasting love. I love John 3.17 as much as I love John 3.16. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Think about that for a second. The world through him might be saved. That means everybody in this world, everybody who ever took a breath in this world, it's God's will that they would come to him unto salvation. What a gift of love. Maybe you're out there today and you think, nobody loves me. Nobody could ever love me. The things that I have done in my life, no one could ever love me. In fact, I don't deserve anyone's love. I certainly don't deserve the love of the Father. Well, you know what? None of us deserve that kind of love, that kind of love from the Father, that he sees past all of our sins. He sees past our rejection. But know this, before the foundation of the world, God chose us to be a part of his family. Why? Because he loves us. The the Lord Jesus Christ, these are his own words in John chapter 15, verse 13 says this, greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. We see the love of the Father. Here we see the love of the Son. We feel the love of the Father, the love of the Son, through the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Greater love has no one than this, than to to lay down one's life for his friends. The Lord Jesus Christ calls you friend. If you have accepted his salvation, he calls you friend. You're a part of the family of God. And that's all because of God's everlasting love. So if you're looking for that perfect gift to give this year, point somebody to Christ. Open God's word to them that they might know that the gift, the greatest gift that would ever be given has already been given to them. And it's the gift of God's love. May you receive it this year. May you receive it today. And I pray that you have a blessed Christmas. I pray that you have a blessed week. And I pray that God blesses you in this upcoming year, that you are eyes wide open to all of God's blessings. Thanks for joining me. I pray that you have a blessed day in the Lord.